I printed these. These are the templates for the holes. Uh, so as I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this to the underside of the battery cover, and then I'm going to put double-sided tape on there, and then I'm going to put the plate, the the aluminium plate that sits on the back of the batteries. I'm going to put that up against it, and then hopefully it'll leave that in place, so as I know exactly where to drill the holes, because obviously it's it's going to be bloody close anyway. Oh yeah, it is in sections, but I've got to be 100% certain that the holes are all in the right place because it's going to be close, believe me, it will be close. And then I bought, what was it, 50 screws there. So they're countersink um, hex screws, they're M3 screws, I think. So I'm going to be using those to secure this onto the battery plate. And I'm also going to be using double sided, what is it, 3M bloody tape, is it 3M, no it's M, <laughs> they've got 3Ms, it's not 3M, this is Chinese tape, it don't come off once you put it on, if you try and pull it off straight away it's fine, but after 24 hours, it, it no, it, it don't come off after so I've got some some smaller stuff for this which is actually five mil the same as that so I'm going to be using that and then screwing it on and hopefully it ain't going to come off again look at that it's not finished yet <laughs> uh, it's had four coats and this is it's just gone off but it's still not hardened so I can't do anything with it these bits that you can see, the bumps, they're actually parts of these bloody brushes. I'm using foam brushes. Where is one? Here, brush. Here, boy. I'm using these brushes. These are too big. I've run out of the other ones, so I had to. I have to cut these down. Um, these were perfect. They're perfect for applying the resin because it goes on a hell of a lot better than a brush. I find anyway. I've tried a brush. So it's done. Yeah, there's a there's a hole there. There's bumps all around here. They're not bad, but there's still bumps. So that's that one. I'll go and get the other one. This is the other one. Obviously, uh, it's not perfect, the same as the other one, but it's near as damn it. There are a few marks in it, but you can't. Strangely, they're not bubble. I know they're not bubbles because there weren't any bubbles. Um, I'm sure it's actually pieces of foam off this, but you can't see them when you get up close. You can't actually see them. It, it seems more of a like a bubble, but it isn't a bubble. Oh, bollocks! I know what I mean. Anyway, this is the bad one, believe it or not, because I didn't do it right. So I've got all this carbon fibre here that I've got to cut off. I mean it's stuck all round and it's gone okay, it's, it's stuck where it's supposed to stick but I've got to cut all that off but then again I've got to cut the other one off I've got to cut it all around on that one yeah a lot of trimming to do hell of a lot of trimming and as everybody knows Carbon fibre is a carcinogen, so you've got to be bloody careful with it. Even I'm going to have to wear a mask. I'm not that stupid. So, what am I doing? <laughs> Pieces like this, where it's lifted. It's, it is actually lifted, believe it or not. It's probably only about a millimetre, but you can still see it. Um, the other one's the same. Unfortunately, carbon fibre doesn't like 90 degree. This one here is rounded off, that's rounded off, that's rounded off. And I wish I'd have known and then I would have rounded that off as well. Um, whether it's going to be visible or not, I don't know. I might be able to get away with soaking it with resin and just flotting it, I don't know. Or I might just leave it like that. You can't really see it. Oh, look at that finish. Oh, lovely. This has turned out a lot better than I thought, actually. I'm very happy. Can you tell?
Anybody who knows me from old sort of uh, plane building, that sort of thing, game, uh, you'll know that I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to things that I've built, made. This is a panel. This is one that's nearly done. As you can see, there's still some low points. But I've had enough. Um, this has had six coats. It's got to be polished up yet. That's done with 2000 wet and dry. This one here I'm just going over and it's it's also had six coats. Now with these coats I'm having to leave it. You have to coat it, leave it 24 hours to settle, sand it down so as you can see where the low spots and the high spots are, coat it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. And in, in between each coach, you have to leave it 24 hours. Now, one annoying bloody part, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see it actually. Can you see that there? Yeah, can you see it? That bit there. That bubble wasn't there when I went to bed. <laughs> and I left it to go off. I left it to solidify, hard and whatever, cure, you know. It wasn't there when I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and it was there and it's really annoying me because I don't know how, but it's gone really deep. So this one's got, I've still got to have another coat on it. There's some low points here. There's a few low points along here as well. <sighs> Being a perfectionist, this is what really pisses me off because I've got to get these absolutely perfect otherwise I ain't going to be happy I may actually get these to a point where I'm reasonably happy and then do them at a later date because it's just taking way 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 too long these have taken every single night work on them this is 80 grit wet and dry believe it or not is it or 180 no this is this is 180 on my very expensive one pound sanding sponge block so unfortunately there ain't a lot to show you because I've been working on this solid for a week this build is going to take me a long long time so if if you if you're new to the channel I am a bloody perfectionist and everything has to be 100% perfect otherwise I'm not happy with it when I did version 2 um, 
I got to a point where it was that'll do. I'm have I've had enough. But it was never perfect in my mind. It was perfect. The the rideability, the power, the speed, the handling, everything was perfect. But the looks of it and everything, it wasn't perfect in my mind, and I wasn't happy with it. That's the only, one of the reasons why I built version three. So I'm going to keep sanding away at this. Then I'm going to give it another coat, and hopefully that's going to be the last one. These are the two halves which have been done and I've gone over them with 2500 wet and dry. Um, I can't go any lower because I'm going, <laughs> believe it or not, down to the bloody the carbon again. They still need another coat but for the time being I'm going to call it a day on these because I've spent way, way, way too long on them. You can see the shiny bits on there which are the, the, the low points or the valleys which has still got to be done. There are some very rough bits I ain't going to show you yet because I am determined to make these flawless. Bits like on here, this is going to be covered, this isn't going to be covered so it's got to be perfect but the only way I'm going to get a glass finish on that is by standing it up like that and then coating it so that's the what I'm going to, what I'm going to do on that. Again on this bit this is going to be covered so it doesn't matter and the same on that one. I've got to get, I've got to rub that down even more. So, where are the bits? These are the bits uh, which have still got to be cleaned up. This is the back piece which is going to go on the back. <laughs> where else would it go, Tony? Up your ass. That's going to go on there like that. Which I'm going to drill holes. This buffering again for anyone who wants to know I never bought a new camera I fixed the old one the speaker which is in there the speaker was loose so I took it all apart I've got loads of screws left over <laughs> it's it's over engineered to the bloody hilt so they're, they're not needed obviously <laughs> anyway so I fixed the camera by fixing the speaker I didn't have to spend. I've noticed here there's no resin left. I've rubbed it down so much, so I've got no choice. I've got to give it another coat. Bollocks. I've got my resin. I've got my hardener. I've got my cups and my mixing stuff and my brush and everything else. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix another coat. And paint it on and then tomorrow it should be handleable. Is that a word? <laughs> I should be able to handle it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that now.
I've gone over it three or four times with the hot air gun, bringing all the bubbles to the surface. Half of the time they burst, but half of the time they don't actually burst. So all you do is you get the corner of your brush, or if you're using a paintbrush, you get a couple of bristles and just dab them, and it actually it'll burst the bubbles. Now when you're bursting bubbles, look at it from all angles. Don't just look straight down of it because some of them aren't visible unless you get down on it. The main ones that are visible are the ones that you get, see the light reflection, the ones that, that you can actually physically see them protruding above, so you can burst those. Now for anyone who's thinking that I'm being bloody stupid because epoxy resin stinks like bloody hell, this stuff is non-toxic, it don't smell whatsoever believe it or not. The normal two-part epoxy like 50-50 stuff that you get stinks. This doesn't smell whatsoever. I'm amazed actually. Well, it's completely f***ing my brain up, but they say it is zero toxicity.